Ladies and gentlemen, this is David Maricatani with another episode of Matt Chat. We're brought to you by USA Wrestling, the national governing body for wrestling in the United States, and Nike Wrestling. Go to athletepscom for all of your wrestling USA Wrestling branded gear. As everyone can see, I'm being joined today by your 2021 Poland Open champion, Alec Pantaleo. Alec, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, well, first of all, let's get to it. Congratulations. Great tournament. It was, what, about a week and a half ago now? Yeah, about a week ago. I, would say. I still have a black eye, to, so pretty recent. <laughs> good, good head block, down block. First line yeah, of right. defense, right? That ends, that's <laughs> end. So um, I, I want to kind of start with, uh, with, with your family background. So um, first of all, I, I, it's pronounced Pantaleo, not Pantaleo or yeah, you know, it. Um, I've got a lot of family on the East Coast that I don't really know, but they say, from what I've been told, um, Pantaleo, you know, um, when I was in Italy, everyone's like, oh, Pantaleo. But <laughs> okay, family, that's Mira Catani. <laughs> yeah, they, loved they loved it, but I just say Pantaleo. I mean, okay, all right. Different way to say it, so. So, and your, your father was a, a very, very good wrestler, correct? Yeah, I come from a whole line of wrestlers. So my dad was a couple-time All-American um, my uncle Joe, well, my uncle Dan was also uh, um, a Division three national champ. Um, his son ended up being a couple times state champ and a national qualifier at Liberty before they cut the program. And my uncle Joe was, I mean, he was the baddest of us all. He was a junior world champ. Um, he was right up there on the Olympic ladder, you know. Yeah. He just had to get by Dave Schultz and Kenny Monday and those guys. So, yeah. Yeah, Uncle Joe was a bad dude. He was a two-time national finalist in college, so – so was there any doubt that you would ever would have wrestled or was that like kind of a given? Like, how did, how did you get into it? You yeah, know, I didn't like... have a choice. I know. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah. I, um, you know, my parents, they they were always very supportive of whatever I did. And I did different sports. You know, I, I played soccer for many years of my life. I tried football. Um, I, you know, I tried racing dirt bikes. I tried doing all these different kinds of things. Um, but I found I was pretty good at wrestling because I'm not the biggest dude in the world, you know, so it kind of suited the suit like just football wasn't for me you know and soccer these dudes started getting faster than me so yeah well and you know i'm sure like once it was important to you you certainly had a lot of people you could go to to get help immediately you know and yeah it well that's a funny thing too about it is and we, i'm sure we'll talk about it later on but you know I, I tried to work with my uncle joe um back in high school and mind you he was like his level of wrestling was just way higher than what i was ever exposed to so I did. I'm like, oh, maybe I should talk to him. But like, I just, it wasn't clicking with me until and then when I get to college and I'm around all these high level wrestlers, I thought back to those sessions with Uncle Joe. I'm like, I should listen more. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just the help was there. I, I just wasn't ready to be um, exposed to it yet. But so that's interesting. So you, I, I did, I did, I did your Wikipedia, you were a state champion and got injured one of your years in high school. Is that correct? Right. My, um, my freshman year, I didn't qualify the state tournament. Sophomore year, I won the state tournament. Okay. Junior year, I was undefeated, um, wrestling really well, and I broke my hand. So that was season ending for me. And then my senior year, I was a state finalist, and I got pinned in 30 seconds in the state finals. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you, so you went qualifier second or first, injury second. So, so to, but I'm really fascinated, like, the level when people are ready to learn their, their coachability, like my dad was a college coach for like 40 years. I was telling you about that off air that, you know, he actually coached Roger Massa back in the yeah. day. And he'd always like, I'd want to show a guy something. He just didn't want to learn. He's like, he's, you almost got to wait for him, David, to like lose in the position that you told him he had to get better at. And then he'll want to listen to you. So yeah. you obviously knew your, your uncle and these other family members were really good wrestlers. Do you think you weren't, totally receptive then or just wasn't clicking wasn't making sense or you know how did that go yeah it's just being naive you know um you know, you think you're the baddest dude because you're having some immediate success you know I, yeah, I tell this yeah. story about you know with Sergey when I, I'll be honest with you when I first met Sergey and his brother Anatoly like I knew that they were good wrestlers I don't know how good they were though <laughs> you know oh, really like, there's some guys you know and then I, I started looking them up. I'm like, these are like the baddest dudes on the planet. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it just like, to me, again, it was just like a good level I wasn't exposed to. I had to like educate myself and want to learn about it. And then when, the, since then is why I've actually probably gotten better at wrestling is because I keep trying to like dive into these levels. I don't know. 
you know, if I, if I like admit that I know nothing, I start to learn something. So that's a, and that's an interesting concept, right? Cause you, you have to be humble to, to, to learn. Right. But at the same time, you have to be confident and almost arrogant to go win what you won. Like, you know, you may be your humble in the t-shirt but when you go put that singlet on, <laughs> you know, you can't be humble anymore. You got to think like I have every tool in the bag to beat whoever they roll out in front of me. Right. Well, that's an interesting thing because I actually was just talking when I was in Guatemala, Brandon Slay about this. I mean, I'm still, again, I'm, I'm 24 and I feel like I'm super young into the freestyle world, but that's what I was saying. I'm like, I just like, I feel like I'm still learning all that. He goes, dude, you made a junior world team six years ago. Like you've been in a freestyle for a while, you know? Yeah. But to me, just being around like Sergey and all these different guys and Sean Bormet, all these just stellar coaches in freestyle wrestling, I feel like I know nothing. <laughs> Um, but so when I do compete though, I'm just, I trust in their training that they got me ready and that it's going to be a dog fight for six minutes. And I think that's what carries me on to any kind of win I had. Yeah. It's interesting. So when you went to college, you, I think you qualified as a freshman and then were a three-time All-American, correct? Yeah. I started as a true freshman. Yep. Yeah. So no red shirt, just straight through in four years, you know, in a super easy conference like the big 10, right? <laughs> <laughs> Killer. Yeah. So. I mean, you had a great career. You had a career that most of us are, would be super envious and be happy to have, you know. But what I'm interested in is, like, like I, I know you made a junior world team. I saw you had a lot of age group success, you know, that kind of thing. But how do you stay confident to go, okay, I, I don't mean this in any way derogatorily, but I didn't win a national title, but now I'm ready to go be the best guy in America and be one of the best guys in the world. Because I think we have a lot of coaches that watch our podcast. We have a lot of, I don't want to call them kids, but a lot of athletes that aren't at the very, very top of the food chain and they're trying to get there. I'm, I'm always interested in the psych, the psychology of how somebody mentally sort of programs themselves for success. Right. Well, you got to think too, is, I mean, I think back to even my coaches, guys like Josh Trella, you know, who was some of the best in the, in the world and didn't win a national title. You know, for me, I had two generationally good wrestlers in front of me, you know, Jason Ulf and Zane Rutherford. Those yeah. dudes, those dudes set records that are going to be hard to beat for years to come. That's who I had to beat to win a national title. And to be honest, I think had I wrestled in off my senior year, that's the best I've wrestled in a while. I think I would have, it would have been right there. You know, it just, it sure. just how, how the seating worked. I, it didn't, it didn't work out. Um, but yeah. So for me, I have no regrets as far as my senior year of college. I mean, I beat the dude I lost to, to take third, you know, yeah. so I think I honestly, God was the second best person if not the best person in that weight class. Um, so that actually kind of helped me like know that I was one of the best dudes that I just didn't have the opportunity. Um, and then I ended up making a U23 team right after that. So it, it kind of reassured me that like, okay, I'm, I'm keep going this trajectory. Um, yeah. I guess for me though, to, to, to reset the success level, I just, I trust in my training. I trust like the thing too is like, I talked to Sergey and Sergey is like, I mean, he told Mason Paris after he won junior worlds, he goes, Congrats, you win junior worlds. Now you're nothing. <laughs> like you just kind of have to always reset that bar and be like, okay. I mean, if you want to be not just the best in the world, but one of the best of all time, you have to always think of yourself as you got to keep going. You got to get more to do, more to do. You can't you you can't just rest on a little bit bit of success, you know, or lack thereof. Yeah, it's so I mean, I've had Sean Bormet on the show, I've had Kellen on the show, and then um, when we moved over to USA Wrestling, one of the first two or three I did was with Sean, I'm sorry, was with Kellen and Sergey together. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I guess we can start with any of those guys, you know, or Chirello. Like, I always feel like wrestlers are sort of the best uh, compilation of the people that have poured themselves into you, you know. So um, maybe let's start with Sean. Like, what is either a mindset or a skill set or that you learned from Sean. Yeah. Sean's that he the thing about Sean. And this is why he's such a good coach is not only does he listen to what you say, but he actually like processes what you say. And he gives you like, he doesn't wait for his turn to talk. He waits to have the right answer for you. So, um, I mean, having him in my corner, it's, it's huge. Like for example, that James green match, I wrestled, um, I wrestled him twice. Right. Yeah. First time, um, you know, we actually worked on clearing underhooks, but, you know, during that same time, I was figuring I was giving up the wrist, and we actually worked right after that match. I'm like, all right, the next time we're to do this. We, like, make these little changes. 
instead of posting on the shoulder, you post on the bicep that keeps your elbow in. Little things like that that I didn't want to have even thought of, you know. And there was, it was a turning point for the next match. I mean, I think I flustered the heck out of James Green because he wasn't getting any of his control ties. I was moving. Um, and that was, a, that was a coaching thing. So Sean, actually, he, he's always calculating. He's processing things, you know. And um, it's, I, I tell you, a bunch of fun, fun stories about you think you know a guy, then you like, oh, wait, this guy's going – something's going on in there, <laughs> you know. What do you mean? Tell me a story. What are you talking about? Yeah, so my, my senior year um, for our, our senior speech, I kind of roasted all the coaches. That was, I told my favorite stories. Okay. Uh, Sean, one of my favorites was if you talk, I mean, you've talked to him. He's a super stoic, nice, like gentle dude. Yeah. But he has this like, like affection for super like hardcore, like death metal, like mean scream music. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. We were down in Florida at the junior, uh, the junior world team trials. And we went to this, um, this like restaurant, it was a bar and grill. And there was one of those bands out there. And me and Josh Trello, like, Eesh, that's a rough crowd. <laughs> Sean, goes, Sean goes, hold on, I know these guys. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go catch up with them. And he's over there in the front row. And I see him, you know, his eyes gleaming, he's just like this, <laughs> like, like doing a rave and stuff. Yeah, and I'm just like, I never would have pegged Sean as being like one of these <laughs> mosh pit guys, you know. But so that's what I'm saying. You think you know, but he, he's yeah. just he's very good at keeping it collected and processing things. Well, it's that. interesting. I was gonna ask you about each coach, but one of the questions I had was about the adjustments that you made with, with in the green match, right? So if I'm right, you lost 8-0 and then you won six, what was the score the second time? 6-2, 5-3. Yeah. But so you, you talk about these little things like can posting the bicep versus the shoulder. Like, is that something that literally you learned right then or was more of a reminder? Like, oh, you're right. Yeah, I'm floating my, I'm floating my elbow. I'm, you know, I'm not being elbow down, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about me and James is, you know, the first time we wrestled was 4-2. I was at the eight-man bracket. I, I lost because I threw a headlock out of bounds, you know, yeah. two points being right there. He also had two push-outs. Second time he wrestled, you know, at, at the national tournament, he had he pushed me out a bunch. He, he did the Jordan Burroughs, you know, where they – and honestly, guy James made, kind of made his, his uh, break on this where he gets his underhooks and he lulls you to feel comfortable and he pushes you out. I gave him, like, four push-outs. Um, and then, um, same thing happened at the first match in Poland, you know, he pushed me out a few times, he got me in a takedown and then I tried throwing him, you know, so yeah. really it was, it's the, it's a little, it's the match was closer than what it seemed. So I just didn't make those mistakes, <laughs> you know, that final match. I, I kept it in my ties. I had a game plan of keeping elbows in, not giving up underhooks. If he just to try to tie up the wrist, clear the wrist right away. You know, but I also saw him make match adjustments too. That's why he's seasoned that. I was attacking one leg, and then after that, he changed his lead. It's at this level of wrestling, it's it's little things like that to make a huge difference. And um, I, I think these next two matches, what we're going to have, it's going to be very tactical for both of us because, I mean, it has to be. Yeah, you guys are like, I mean, I'm sure you guys, your coaches are telling you you're the best guy, you're going to win every time. I'm sure his coach is telling me he's going to. But if you're just a fan like me and you, you you know both guys and you like them, you, it's like it's probably a coin flip, one, two scramble kind of match, like you're saying. So it's interesting to me, like you're talking about making those adjustments. What I saw just from the outside looking in was you were really aggressive that second match. Like you fired off a shot within the first 15 seconds, sort of like a high crotch knee. Like you went high crotch, but you finished, you know, like, like swing single finish to the left side. And then when you guys came back to the middle, you did the same thing right away. Was that something that you were specifically looking for, or was it just, I'm going to be aggressive, push the pace, and you just, your instincts took over? Yeah, I was, I mean, I, if you're going to beat me, you're going you're gonna to maybe have to bleed to do it. I was, I was there ready to scrap. Um, and he was a little beat up. He came, he just came off a match too. And, you know, yeah, I, within the first 30 seconds, I already had four points on the board. I was, I was there to score points. And then again, he changed. He changed his lead leg, which kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, but even yeah, with I, that, you know, I saw him do that because I thought, I, I'm like, man, Taylor's gonna go to go to the well again, you know, because if it's working, you don't stop, right? Right. Um, so even then, though, I had numerous positions in that match where I was just being overzealous, and I, I should have scored. Like me picking him in the air, as cool of a picture of, as it was, like I should have just been planting it, you know, and securing those points. And that happened numerous times. 
So, um, but again, I was the one initiating the action. I was the one control, like, even though it was a lot of energy on my part, I was feeling good because I was, I was attacking. So that's the thing about wrestling. You're either score or you're either defending or you're attacking. You can't, you can't really do both. And I felt like I was on the offense most of the time that match. So. Yeah. Sidebar that scramble that you guys had when you had it in the air and then, you know, look like you're trying to run him out of bounds almost. And then it felt like he did something while he was in the air with no post to redirect you and right. then hit the ground and he goes splits and then you're chasing. And, you know, long story short, it's this amazing scramble and he ends up figuring out a way to get grounded. Right. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit just about a scenario like that. Cause your mentality has to be like, there's some guys they go, man, that was now again, you were winning. So it's a little different, but like, Hey, I, I threw the kitchen sink at that guy and didn't score anything. The other guys would be like, I got there, and now I can do it again. I mean, you have to coach yourself mentally to be positive when something like that happens, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's that's the thing about it, too, is, you know, I mean, if you're the one that's defending it all, it's actually more taxing on you because then you're you're panicking and you're very, like, like you're reactive. Um, yeah. When you're, when you're the one acting, you're controlling the action, I, I just feel like you, you get less tired. So, had I been the one doing the splits and been in the, in the air, I might have had a different mindset. I don't know, um, but again, in that match, I was I was pretty fired up. I was ready to ready to scrap. And you know, James, he's dude, he's a freak athlete. He's he's one of the best in the world. And yeah, you know, either way, either of us we make this world team, it's we're in good hands. Um, For sure. Well, and he's also just, so dangerous. If you, if you land in the wrong position with that lace, it's not a two point take down. It's yeah. a six or eight point take. I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time on, you know, defending that and not making, you know, if I, if I, if I do get taken down, it's, it's right to, um, right to defense. And actually that's funny story. Cause when I was wrestling a um, with the last like 10 seconds left to go, he took me down and he got me in a quick gut, the real quick transition. And Sergey, right after the match, he was like, Alec, you give up the guts. How do you do this? Like he was yelling because <laughs> we practiced like right away. Good position. Don't, don't rest at all. And, uh, that was the first thing he said to me, not congrats. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> you gave up the gut. How do you do that? You know? <laughs> so it was, it was fun. I mean, it's again, if I keep saying this course, I think I'll, I'll be all right. But. Yeah. Well, and, and you brought up two things there. Let's go to Sergey first. So I've known Sergey. He came and did a clinic at my dad's school in the seventies. And just like you said, like you think, you know, what good wrestling is. And then like that kind of, that guy grabs you and teaches you stuff. Like I, I it's your interview, but I have to tell a quick story about Sergey. Some yeah, kid please. at the end said, so "Some kid at the end of it goes, well, do you know anything about riding legs? You know, because, and uh, I was his drill dummy. I think I was like, I don't know, not old enough to get killed. And he goes, yes, legs, very easy. And like, I'm in ref referee's position. He goes, okay, go. And he put a leg, I mean, he put me in a bent leg turn. My heel was to my head yeah. in about four seconds. He goes, any other yeah. question about legs? <laughs> so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Kellen Russell told me that Sergey is the best he's ever seen at once you get to a certain position, he knows all the iterations of that. Like, okay, if I do this, he does that. If I do this, he does that. If he does this, I do that. A, do you agree with that? And B, what how has Sergey influenced your wrestling and helped you improve? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just the system he has. I mean, it, it, Sean does it too. And again, I didn't understand until I started working with Sergey. Then I then I, I talked to Sean. Sean, and I pick up these these similarities. You you can find those little traits of success. But they do. They they know exactly what they're doing. Um, and if a guy reacts, how you can counter that reaction to work in your in your favor. So um, and it makes life easier instead of instead of it turning into like a just a brute physical sport where you're trying to muscle over and over, which is what I was back in high school and even early on in college, now you start thinking technically. And if you already have that brute force on top, it's just, it comes together perfectly. And I think that's probably what, why I've been having more success lately is my technique has improved substantially, especially on parterre. I'm turning people now. I used to never turn people. And, you know, Sergey's it's his gut wrench series. You just learn it. And it, it's a little bit different than what I've always been taught, you know, but it makes sense. It's about using like your skeletal structure to your advantage, using these bones in your wrists Sergey's, I think he, I think he has metal bars in his hand, in his arm because I mean, if he gets on top of you, he he'll still turn me, and I've gotten better apart there. Um, Kellen Russell told some story about he was going with Sergey, and Sergey grabbed him a certain way and goes, "I couldn't feel like where my liver was for like two and a half days." Yeah, he's like, it's like my body was numb in that. Time. 
I know we give him we give him jo- like jokes or like oh yeah those Russian multivitamins you know. And the cold spray, right? And the cold spray, yeah, that's funny. That's the cold spray. So yeah, he he just I mean if you watched him, I mean you did watch him back in the day when he was wrestling. I, I saw a highlight of him wrestling Gene Mills, and Gene Mills was I mean Gene Mills, bad dude was for the, the USA. Bad dude, yeah, dude, he looked like he was. Look, like he was drilling on him. I mean, Sergey was just doing whatever he wanted to, whenever he wanted to. It's, it's it was unbelievable. He's just his technique was so on point that it just he flowed. It was like it was like a dance. It was it was unbelievable. Really watching. He was absurdly good. Like he was almost like cartoon good. Like you're watching it, you're like, like you're saying, like did Gene Mills like? And you, I, Gene Mills would never do this. Like, did somebody pay Gene Mills a lot of money to not try very hard? Like, because I mean, that's yeah. like, you, you know, he wouldn't do that. But you're like this. You would have thought this this guy was pinning everybody in college, you know, like not just like winning, but like mashing people, destroying people, breaking people. Yeah. And then, like you said, he's getting drilled on. You're like, oh my God, you know? Right. Uh, right. Tell me about Kellen Russell. Like when I've had him on, to me, he's like a super deep thinker, um, always calm, you know, and he had, and you guys obviously wrestled very close to the same way. It's obviously different time periods, but. Right. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you spar with him, I'm guessing. Yeah, we wrestled a little bit. Um, actually, we did a lot back in college. Kellen's a, he, a very important part of my success. Um, think about Kellen. He's just a winner. Like, there's there's some people that are just the cut different. And how he, how he talks to himself. How, watch him play handball. That dude's, that dude's running. He's trying to score points. Same with Josh Trello. The, both of those guys are just – they're just winners. They've always been winners, and you know. And it's what, whatever they want to do, they want to win it. So – yeah, I mean, think about Kelton too. He's kind of calmed down with his age. Josh too, with their age, you know. But even then, um, like actually, a week before Pan Am's, the week of Pan Am's, I was drilling around, and Kelton's like, "I'm wrestling part tear," and I was like, "Oh," because he he just hopped in fresh and he started gut wrenching the heck out of me. <laughs> I'm just like, he had to get his his fix of winning for the day against someone good, you know. I'm like, yeah. do this in the start of practice next time when I'm fresh, not when I'm already tired. <laughs> but yeah. He, I was watching somebody posted a video of you guys playing handball, like formats playing goalie. You got those little goals, and you know it's like one of those little highlight reels. And then it's like whose team won, and like Russell jumps like right on camera, like art, you know, like us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just how those guys are. I mean, again, it's um, someone who kind of reminds me of that Kyle Dake. I was talking to Kyle Dake, and I actually drilled him a little bit. He's just he's just one of those guys who are just winners of the of the, of the world. Like everything they want to do, they want to win at, and. I mean, I think if you wrestle in general, you have that little bit of stubbornness. I mean, I have it too. <laughs> you know, if if, yeah. if, I, if I start beating, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I get very stubborn. Um, but that's what separates the differences. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. Some guys I've wrestled in the past, he come up to me after matches, like, "Oh, I'm like a fan." You know, that's that's what they'll say to me. I'm like, I'm like a fan of yours. I followed your wrestling. I'm like, I feel like if you're a competitor, you don't say that to someone. Like ever. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm cordial. I'll be cordial with you. Me and James Green are cordial, but, but like I'm not. We're not like fans of each other, you know. If that yeah. makes sense. I mean, to, to me, I mean, so like you're at a weight when, and we'll talk about the the weight change stuff. But you're at a weight where like when you go up, like you're in Burroughs' weight, and Burroughs might have been a guy you looked up to. I mean, he, he won a lot of stuff, but you can't think that way. You certainly can't say that. Like, I've I coached jujitsu, and I've done a lot of jujitsu, and part of it I like the sportsmanship like these guys all hug after they lose and I'm like yeah I mean like I'll shake your hand I'll say good match but I'm not trying to hug you if I lost and I don't know why you want to hug me if you lost like I just I don't maybe I should be a better sport about it but I'm not sure I see that yeah well, funny story about that I um so that day after the tournament in Poland um like I was sore all right I was pretty sore I wrestled a few matches it's just heating up cooling down and gets you the lactic acid but so I woke up in the morning, went and saunaed. Um, and it was just a one, like it was like a little sauna. There's no one else in there, and it's like I don't know, eight a.m. Yeah, I'm saunaing, and I hear the door open, and someone walks in. I look, it was Aliyev. <laughs> oh. Aliyev walks in. He he looks at me and goes, ah, oh. <laughs> he so to see me in there, and he comes in. We're we're talking a little bit, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was just funny because like it's the same idea. Like he was. It's like of all people, it had to be me, the one guy yeah. that beat him, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I mean, I think you again. It's the the sportsmanship is really important in wrestling. You know, it's it's a battle battle wits every time you guys wrestle. But um, I mean, it's a combative sport. You're trying to, you're trying to take another man's soul on the mat here. So yeah, right. Being, you know. 
tell me about the Aliyev match because so like look you you've had a lot of success right but there's I I always think like the, the matches that I want like there were certain matches that were like tipping points for me like I know for me I didn't win state my freshman year I wrestled in some Greco match I beat some guy 15 to 14 I'm probably super lucky to win right it's Greco it doesn't really correlate to folk style the guy was way class down for me and just had bumped up and afterwards, they go, that was the AA Illinois State runner-up. And literally, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I can win Missouri. Like, I was like, if I can beat that – and I, I could have beat him in cornhole, you know. But it was like, <laughs> like I beat this guy in something, maybe cornhole. I mean, but like, you know, I beat him in some <laughs> yeah. form of wrestling, right? Like, this is I, – I belong at this level. Like, you talk yourself into believing you're at a level. You hope you're at that level. And then something happens that – that does that like you've had a ton of success i'm not trying to put that on you but like when you beat an aliyev with the resume that guy has with the credentials that that guy has does that validate you does that give you more confidence or is it just not nah, another day at the office i expected to win yeah again i i, I think the people i surround myself with you know the miles and means you know stavon michik sergey's all the all country staff all the michigan guys like these guys are the best in the world so it's like yeah aliyev is one i mean i he's my pick maybe him or Baz Ring to win the Olympics, you know, at 65. Right. Um, and the thing is, it's like, I, and what I said to UWW after, and they kind of twisted my words on, on a, an interview they did, and I actually commented because I didn't like that. Um, I said, listen, he's up a weight class. I'm I'm faster than him. I'm stronger than him, and I'm bigger than him. Like, those are, those are three very big equalizers when it comes to wrestling. You know, that's the problem I had with at 74. These guys are just bigger yeah, yeah. and stronger. And I'm a big, strong – I'm a pretty strong dude. Um, They twisted to say I was better than him. And I'm like, looking at his his track record, how consistent he's been at being good. Like, he are, he, he's a better wrestler than me. He's proven himself. Doesn't mean I can't become a better wrestler. I plan to be. Um. But he no, was a better an player. honest assessment at this stage in life. If you compare, if you do the Pepsi challenge, his resume is better right now. Yeah, he's he's the dude. He's a three time world champ, you know, Olympic bronze medalist. I think I can be as good as him, if not better, you know. Um, but that's what I said. I'm like, I, I expected to win that match, especially with him being up. And I feel like he actually kind of was a small 65 guy. But, um, and that's why I think what I did beat him is he like he'd do these shots that normally guys do and. Like he wasn't moving me, and then when I got behind him, he, he's very good at like hip icing out, kicking around. I kind of just grabbed and threw. Like guys usually don't do that; they're not strong enough to do that. And that was a four point move, you know. Um, so yeah, it was it was kind of another day at the office for me because I expected to. And then wrestling a guy like James Green, who was a, actually a 70, 70 kg guy, he felt bigger, he felt stronger. You know, there's there's a difference. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, you have a it's very interesting because your perspective is to me super realistic. Like you said, like he's a better wrestler than me on paper right now. You know, we'll check our stats in 10 years and see where I'm at. But right now this is a fair assessment and yeah, I am bigger, faster, stronger because of the weight change. So I expected to win, but at the same time, it's almost more pressure than if you expected to win and you didn't It'd be disappointing, but you know, sure. you, I put this respectfully, you start putting a hit list together of people you've beaten, maybe a hit, a win list of people you've beaten, Aliyev's a nice name to have on that list, period. I mean, like I said, I don't care if you guys are playing cornhole. That's still a good win, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this weight class thing. So I guess for people that, that don't know, you rest, your, your ideal weight is 70 kgs, which is 154. The Olympic weights are 65 kgs, which is 143, and 74 kgs, which is, I think, 162.8. Um and so you're, and you seem like the perfect tweener. Like, I, I don't know if you cut a lot of weight or you just stay super fit, but you don't seem like you're killing yourself to make 70, but 65 seems like an enormous cut. I mean, that's an 11 pound difference. And then going up 11 or going up 8.8 8, 8 .8 pounds, you can see the difference because you're not a real long guy. And then so that, you know, length becomes a, another factor that you fight too with more of those 74 guys. So uh, for like the next, I won't call it a quad, but for the next cycle, the next three years, are you going to stay at 70 and then try to shrink or grow yourself or just wrestle 70 all the way through it and not worry about the Olympics and, and whatever you're going to do, what is the thought process behind that? Yeah. Well, the, the Olympics are the pinnacle of wrestling. So I, I'm, I'm going to try my, ha my hand at that before I walk away from the sport. 
Um, how it worked last time is I kind of I made that U23 team, um, and it, shortly after were were the actual the trial or the qualifier for the trials. Um, it was like, like a month difference, and that was at 70 kg. And um, I was planning on going down at 65. I just started my weight cut too late, and I got down the week of the U.S. Nationals. I got down to 147 or 146 and a half. And I was like, dude, I'm still like three and a half, four pounds over. And I have to make this weight twice and beat the best guys in the world, you know? Yeah. And so last minute decision, like two days before the tournament, I decided to go up to 74. And uh, I felt undersized. I ended up taking eighth, only the, but only the top six qualify for the trials. Yeah. So two years later, basically, um, I uh, it was a year, a year and a half later, I went to that last chance qualifier and um, I was still a little under, undersized, but I was wrestling well. And then I just, I beat, I lost to someone who was a full size 74 chance Marsteller. I mean, he's usually at 79. Yeah. And he, I just, I couldn't move him, you know, and he, no one was beating chance that day. Chance went there to win that. He beat everyone. Yeah. He beat Vincenzo that day as well. Right. Right. So it's just um, a little bit of luck involved, but uh, yeah, I mean, my, I walk around like 160, to be honest, my perfect weight would be 150, that 158 eight man bracket that I felt great there. Um, and yeah, every time I weigh in at 70 kg, I'm usually like, like a like a kilo under or half, at least a half kilo under. I just, you know, just it's just dehydrating real quick and I'm good to go. So in, in 20, well, I guess in 23, for people that don't understand this, 2023 is a really important, well, they all are because like, you know, like if you make the world team this year at 70, well, it, I guess in a, like an Olympic way, like let's because 65 is going to be open. Like if you were to make it and then medal, then you get to sit to the semis or finals, depending on how USA Wrestling is doing that. So you start positioning yourself years out. I mean, that was the Bur the Burroughs Dake saga for years. You know, like JB deservedly so was always waiting, and Dake was always going through the tournament to get to him. So in 23, will you go down or up, or what will be the plan? Yeah, I do see myself going down. I mean, I can here's the thing, I can make that weight. I just I ran out of time for strength in my body, you know. Um, but if Jordan Oliver can make that weight, I can make that weight because Jordan Oliver is saying he gets bigger than I get. So, um, will it suck to do? Yeah, absolutely, it's gonna suck. Yeah, um, but I'm gonna be very disciplined. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to shrink my body. So if I just try and cut the weight and wrestle, I'll I'll look like crap out there. I have to do it properly. Yeah, so I literally have on my notes, I go, what is it literally like to shrink your body? So, like, people use this term all the time, and I don't think people really understand it because it's, first of all, most of us got plenty of weight we could lose by just, like, stopping eating chicken wings and stuff like that, you right. know? So, but you're literally shrinking your body. So are you, like, taking in less protein? Are you taking in less carbs? Are you, how are you literally metabolically doing that? Yeah, I mean, um, protein, carbs are important because you have to train too, and you have to recover. Yeah, that's really important. Um, it's portion sizes, really. I mean, you're you're kind of consistently starving, but not enough to where your body is, is like actually starving. You know, so yeah, super small portion sizes. Um, you know, just just enough to get by, and eventually your body starts to be like, we need to start burning some excess weight somewhere or excess like energy. And it starts going to, you know, your muscle stores, your fat stores, and you just start to get smaller. Also, another thing is, like, um, you know, wearing, like, the proper, like, heating gear, like, like sauna suits. After, after a workout, you know, if you, you went through a whole wrestling practice, put on, like, a sauna suit or something, go sit on a bike for, like, 20, 30 minutes or so. It lets your body keep burning, but it's low impact on you, but your body's hot. Yeah. And, like, you have to burn something. And, I mean, it, it sucks. You, you, you go home after that, and you – you don't feel great, but that's, that's the name of the game, man. You, it's, it's, it's a, it's a difficult sport. If you wanted an easy sport, you, you picked the wrong one, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I was blessed to do one of the play-by-play -play mats at the Olympic trials. And one of the things that is so interesting to me is like, you know, like, for example, like you said, like you came up and Marsteller came down, like, you know, like you see these matchups where like, you know, like I remember the one year Jaden, was wrestling, you know, Dake and Dake, you know, like at in 16 and 2016 Olympic trials, like and Dake had wrestled 65 in college and Jaden had wrestled 97, you know, and like, you're like, those guys will never wrestle. And then, you know, sure enough, all this stuff happened. But like you said, because of the weight class is changing from 10 to six, there's this critical mass where all these guys are sort of hitting each other. Um, 
I coached for a long time and I always believed that to a certain extent, coaching, I think is a little overrated. If you get a bunch of great guys in the room with the right attitude and but I don't mean coaching is overrated. Like you don't have to know every X and O if you create a great culture and you have other people to train with. And I look at this, the Cl Cliff Keen wrestling club and you got a mean and you got Steven Misik or Stevan Misik who's the number one seed at the Olympics, uh, Mason Paris, you know, yourself, Logan Massa won the U.S. Open a couple years ago. How often do you guys just kind of pick each other's brains on either wrestling philosophy, specific situations? Like, let's say, to use an example, like I keep getting caught and pushed out of bounds in this underhook. And maybe what Sergey or Sean or Kellen or Josh, whoever is showing you, it's just not clicking. And you know you have to win that scenario. How often do you guys trade knowledge with each other? All the time. Yeah. Guys, Alex Danger, I go, I'll tell, I'm like, Alex, what do you do here? Alex, dude, don't, hey, don't be surprised if he wins a world championship it's up at 79 kg when he's back. He just had, he's come off of surgery. He's, he's, he's super good. But yeah, so we, um, all the time, I'll ask him, like, what do you guys do here? Stevan, his style of wrestling is completely different than mine, but it doesn't mean I can't pick some things out. Um, you know, Miles, you know, he, we're always talking about these little different things that like could possibly help us. And we wrestle each other a lot. You know, we will, it doesn't matter how big or how small they are. Well, I'll grab you. I'll try and turn you, you know. Sure. So, yeah, yeah you learn. I mean, iron sharpens iron. That's, that's, that's how it works. But at the same time, when Sergey speaks, you do, you listen because with his track record, you know, he, he's very one sided. This is the way you do it. And it, it, for the longest time, I had a hard time like understanding that. But then I start to do it his way. And it wasn't always my way. I had to change my way. But his way does work. <laughs> so it's, you know, you, you got to kind of listen. Um, just well, like I said, if you, if you, if you agree, if you admit that you don't know much, you might actually learn something. Yeah. So it's a humble, but smart way to, to look at that. I mean, like, I, I mean, I know uh, Ringer really well. Like, you know, we've, we've hung out. Like when I used to go to Stillwater, he would take me out. And when he moved to Michigan, where well, he stopped halfway, he stayed at my place and yeah. I kept had his U-Haul out front and all that kind of yeah. stuff. He's a, and he's a very interesting dude because he knows a lot more than kind of what he shows. You know, like he shows just that near arm far leg series and like a couple other things. But when you talk to him about wrestling, like he knows his way around a lot of positions, you know, he just oh, was yeah. so good at a couple things. Like, do you guys try to steal like that near arm far leg or anything like that from him? Yeah. He's a horse, man. He, and he, he's also one of those dudes who like, we actually were talking when I was in um, Italy. We were talking, um, me, Kevin Jackson, JB, those guys. We were talking about Ringer, and they're like, "He's a winner, man. He's a gamer. Any anything he does, he just tries to win at." You know? Oh yeah. It's just one of again one of those those, those rare people of the world that just like competitors. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some stuff that like like if I I watch him do it, and I'm like, I'm a strong dude, but I can't even do that right now. I've got to get stronger. He's just yeah. I mean, he, he's. Um, there's a reason why he's a hot trophy winner and what a three-time national champ. Yeah. You know, there's there's a reason. So yeah. I tease him, I go, You're the only guy that can eat a pizza and it goes straight to your biceps. And then one night we were shooting pool together. It was me and a buddy and him, and we're playing teams, and he goes, All right, coach, best out of five. I go, Okay. My team won the first three games, like three oh. He goes, All right, best out of seven. We won the fourth game. He goes, best out of nine. <laughs> And I was yeah, I no, like, I go, we're not leaving till this guy wins. Like, he, they ended up winning six out of 11. I was yeah. like, dude, we got to go. Like, I got to go do play-by-play -play tomorrow. Like, like you said, he ain't leaving till he wins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that how – I'll tell you what. He – um, so he – in training, he hurt his ACL, had a good surgery. But he's back in the mat now. He'll be competing soon. But over that time he was recovering, he's been, he was lifting a lot. Yeah. And, and that dude, he looked like Bane and Batman. He was just, he was just <laughs> jacked out of his mind, like 200 pounds of just straight muscle. And I, that's when I kind of realized, I'm like, dude, when this guy gets back, knowing how good, how good a wrestler he is, he's going to he's gonna maul some people. But yeah, yeah he's already been shrinking his weight back down to go down to 79. And I, I'm excited for him to, to watch him compete again. Bane's a great analogy. What's yeah. uh, That's an awesome call out to call Ringer that the next time I see him. Yeah. So you've got, you got two people in the club that have already qualified for the Olympics, right? Amin and Misik. Yep. Yep. So obviously you, I, I mean, no, no criticism. Like you don't get to go this year to the Olympics. How awesome would it be to have like kind of 
you know, pour a little bit of yourself into those guys and those guys medal or win it or something like that. Is that like, do you look at yourself like, man, I can help these guys make their dream come true here for the next six, seven weeks and a couple months before right. that? I, I'm, I'm, you know, that's maybe it's just me, but when my friends are having success, like, I feel like I'm having success because it, it's just, it, it, it rubs off, you know. Um, I think Stev, uh, Stevan and Miles are both going to medal at the Olympics and, you know, talk about that. So, yeah, Miles is bringing Alex Dinger as a training partner, you know. Ste you know, Stevan's got another one of his, uh, one of our good buddies going with him. So, um, I was hoping I was maybe going to try and tag along as a journey part of it. I'm like, you oh, figure it out, man. Somebody <laughs> yeah. carry the bags, do some vlogs, whatever. <laughs> right, I'll do the grocery shopping. Um, but yeah, so I mean, these next few months, definitely anything I can do to help them, I will absolutely try to do that. I'm actually, um, again, it's I know they're they wrestle for foreign countries, but I'm actually going out. I leave Monday, I'll be out in Ithaca training with Dake for a week doing the best I can do to get him ready for, for the Olympics. You know, I hope he wins the 74 weight class. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if they have success, then, you know, our club has success. And I feel like I have success. So that's, that's, that's that trickle down effect you have, you know. It says a lot about your character, though, not just it's the right thing to say, obviously, but the enthusiasm level, you know, the genuineness of that reaction, like, yeah, man, of course, you know, if I can help these guys out and, you know, opportunities are rare and precious and people get hurt and people get cheated and weird stuff happens. And I was doing the play by play for those worlds in 2019, you know, like at four in the morning and Rovat was my color commentary. Well, obviously has a Michigan background and, you know, he's, he's like, Hey, Cliff Keen's got more wrestling qualifiers right now than USA wrestling does, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, or specific guys too. Cause you know, like with, with Stevan and, and Miles, they they didn't have to go wrestle off again. It wasn't like Snyder where he qualified the weight and he still had to beat somebody or JB or those or you know those guys, you know. So yeah. it's awesome what Sean and Sergey and Kellen and Chirella have put together. Um, I it's this time's gone so fast. I got like two minutes left. I was going to ask you about working out with the college guys. I know they got a great team. So I just want to ask you this. Normally. I interview guys that are coaches and they're a lot older. And I ask this, you're, you're, you're going to be 25. Is that right? In like yeah. a couple of weeks. Yeah. A couple of weeks. Yeah. So happy early birthday. Um, what would you tell 15 year old Alec Pantaleo if you had a chance to like go back and maybe like help him improve? What just, what would you tell yourself if 10 years ago? Um, ignore the naysayers. A lot of, I've been talking about it, A lot of people told me not to go to Michigan. A lot of people that are close to me, too, they're like, don't go to Michigan. You're not going to get the attention. You know, you're not the big enough name to do it. And it'd be the best decision I ever made, you know, because I've had success there and I, I wouldn't trade in it anywhere. Um, dive into what you're good at. You know, I, I've always been best at my feet. It's, it's, and I've gotten better at my feet. Um, but at the same time, technique is really important. I think in high school, kids are always taught to go really fast, do these like one man, one minute speed drills. I think you have to really learn the proper technique early on then the speed comes, you know, being smooth, it makes you fast. And um, I was, I had to relearn a lot of my technique when I got to college because I was just rushing through things. And, um, and that's I'm, I'm still relearning technique, but it's, it's, I just have enough, enough muscle memory where I can at least get some of this, this done, you know, progressively. So it's, I like, it's good advice. I like that line being smooth makes you fast. Like I like that. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, I, I, have heard a lot about you from all those guys that I know we obviously have mutual friends, uh, been a fan from afar. Uh, it was great to get to meet you and talk to you. And uh, you're as uh, genuine as, as you seem. So that's probably one of the best, that's probably the best compliment I can give. you. Yeah. Thank you. I try to be, man, I'm trying to do something out of this thing called life, you know, and I'm having fun with it. So. Yeah. Well, Alec Pantaleo, 2021 Poland champion. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you everybody for watching, listening, and sharing. We'll speak to you all next week. Thanks, Dave.